If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It already says... 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be part of Alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in at Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. This here is a dragon. It's actually pretty cool looking when you're up close. It looks a little weird with the lighting in here. Yeah, um, but this, this is what's going to happen. So within the next week, Vinny is going to put like a riff or like a short piece of a song up on Patreon. It's going to be public so uh, anybody can access it and three days after it goes up on patreon it's going to go up on the channel and in the description of the video and also in the description on patreon you can send add something to his riff and the first one to send the best thing that like vin says holy shit that really is really cool is going to win this dragon so uh so it's going to go up within the next week. It's going to go up on Patreon. And three days after it goes up on Patreon, it's going to go onto the regular channel. So if you're a patron, you'll get the notification. If you're not a patron, you'll have to keep checking in on Patreon. Um, and then uh, and you'll... And we're giving uh, away the dragon? Yes, the dragon is going to be the winner for whoever picks that... Whoever comes up with the best addition to whatever riff piece you put up there. Oh. That can be vocals. It can be drums. It could be whatever you want. It doesn't... You know, whatever you want. That's a lot of pressure. Okay. Oh, you come up with stuff every single night. Have some of that thing you. <laughs> some of the things the you absent. Been doing. Yes. <laughs> yep. You, you all, that, shit is, that shit is real, bro. I came <laughs> up with that shit literally. Like, <laughs> I took a sip of that shit, then I sat and then down he sits and I came down. Up with the greatest thing I've ever come up with. Like, uh, I'm like, I'm sick in the bed. I'm watching him. He takes a couple sips of this stuff. Smells like licorice. And then, like, he starts playing. I was like, oh my gosh, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard you create. <laughs> Um, it's very beautiful. So, yeah, so yeah, anyway. It flew out immediately. Yeah. It's the best thing I've ever written ever. It, it's pretty crazy. So, anyway, within the next seven days, it's going to be going up, and then, you know, there's the details. So, if anybody so wants I'll to participate. So, I'll switch and then let's go. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, and and I'm going to. Like, I feel bad saying that, because I don't, like, I don't want to promote, promote alcohol. it or anything. Yeah, like, I know. But. Well, you shouldn't do it if you have an alcohol problem. Just don't never know. been, I've just, I don't want to attribute it. Maybe it was a coincidence. But I've been listening to a lot of Neil Viscara, so yeah, yeah, that's true. You have a I, lot. I can't, okay, I can't, you can't. I don't want to attribute it all to absent. But. <laughs> okay, so up next, uh, this is the True Cult stream, and uh, if you're wondering where we stream, we stream on a channel called Vin and Sorry Live. So there's that. Anyway, Eye of Solitude, Act Three. He who willingly suffers is the name of the song. Um, this song is longer than the usual limit of ten minutes. Um, and what we do with songs like these behind the scenes is basically the the alliance. It takes up two of their picks because it's a longer song. So uh, have no fear if you have a song that's over ten minutes and you want to get it reacted to. There are ways to do so. Uh, Kellandra said that this is his pick. He was excited that this, oh, this one won. Pick? Yep, as he subbed them multiple times. This song in particular mixes traditional fruit, 
traditional funeral doom, spoken word, and some heavy black metal tremolo picking with some lead guitar work that is atypical for the style. Uh, the lyrics are up on Trello, okay? Mm-hmm. The most interesting fact about this band, though, is that their main architect, Daniel Niago, has a whooping tw- a whopping 28 band credits to his name, 11 of which are currently bands? active. The guys in 28 bands? Yeah, and 11 of them are active. La, 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 la. He was also a member of Shape of Despair, which you guys have pre- previously reacted to. All right, so uh, this is the winner of the Doom Free For All poll. Eye of Solitude is a funeral funeral doom band from the UK. This track is the third track from their concept album, Canto the, th- the Third. Okay. Let's right. check it out. He Who Willingly Suffers, which is interesting because of the song. We just we finished just, the song on suffering, yeah. The song that we just did. So there we go. Get ready to suffer. Get ready to suffer, losers. All right. He Who Willingly Suffers. Let's go. Kill a draw. Don't leave me wrong.
pretty. How hard a thing it is to say, what was this forest? Savage, wrath and stern. Which in the every thought renews the fear. So bitter it is, and death is a little more. But of the good to treat, which still I've found, speak will I of the other things I saw. I cannot well repeat how there I entered. So full was I of slumber at the moment which I was abandoned. In a true way, for after I had reached, and I saw and I felt, at that point, I knew the valley was terminated, which I had with consternation pierced my heart. Vested already with the planet's rays, which leadeth o'er the night by day. Then was the fear a little quieted that in my heart's lake had endured throughout the night. Oh no, the night which I had passed so piteously. And even as he, he who disturbed my slumber with distressful breath. And so did my soul that still was playing onward, turn itself to re behold the past which never, never yet a living person left. After my weary body I had rested, the way resumed, I on this desert slow. So that the firm but ever was the lower and lower and lower amongst the ice of the
again. Wow. Hard to believe that song was long. <laughs> it's 13 minutes. 13, yeah. 13 minutes long. Yeah. Did you know that Kel plays? Kel and Draws? Yeah. I never really paid attention yeah. to who in the channel plays and who doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kel. Have you heard some of his stuff? Uh, I don't think so. He's never sent me any of his stuff. Well, you should send us some. Yeah, what are you? What are you? Uh, what are you into, Cal? You do the heavy shit. You do melodic. What do you do? What well, do you he do? said if he was doing that tremolo, his hand would be hurting. So. Well, yeah, that's uh, that was a pretty challenging, challenging uh, uh, thing there. Wow. Too, okay. The they, they that. that that was, man. Um, that that's the sort of vocal style that when they're, when he was reading. The spoken I word couldn't poetry. believe how long the spoken word went on. I was so glad that it went on for so long. Yeah. I don't know. Like, sometimes I'm interested in what the person is saying, and sometimes I'm interested in just feeling the spirit of what they're saying. And, like, that's how it felt like you just... I was just, like, soaking in that feel, that vibe. Yeah. I really, um... And the music behind it at the beginning. We, we, we talk a lot about this, <sighs> about how privileged we are, but I'm really glad that we figured all this shit out for our channel. Like, what do you mean? I'm just glad that we're not doing Metallica and, and Tool and, and... Oh, well, no, I, I would love to still be able to do them as well. I am, I'm glad that we figured out a way to incorporate more things and, and hear more things, but I... I <laughs> There's always there are, a part there of me are, there are that some, misses there hearing are some more tools. DJs <laughs> like Mike. Mike's done like all like top shelf mainstream bands, but right, we still I get just, some of that. Yeah, it's just a lot of bands like that influenced me as a guitarist that I would never have, and just as a player, like I'm so grateful for Neil, like mm -hmm. that band and what that yeah, guitarist does been... because it's like it's oh, it it's so hard to explain how one adjustment or one little extra skill mm -hmm. or one idea can create an so entire much, sound yeah. um but yeah I, i'm very i'm very like like what they did they did rising action from oh. the spoken word like that's something you don't see all the time there have been so many things that have been like repeated over and over and over again like that's definitely something where I'm like, yo, you would murder that, like that, to do yeah. spoken word and then have it bleed into some like. Yeah, I would actually really, really like that. the The spoken word, we we have a little bit of that, the talking in it. Yeah. But it's not like this. Like I, it's not like the drama of the, like it's a different type of drama, the re the reading oh, of the no, other the one. You know what I mean? Spoken word that's done in, spoken in, the, word is, in the current. Yeah. You no, know what I, I'm saying? Like no, it's like I, different. I agree 100. So I I agree. I would like to. Some of that, like, just, like, oh, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. And especially, like, some of the stuff that you write is very, I'm talking about words. There's some stuff, we, you haven't shown me anything li lately, recently. But, like. Lyrically? Yeah, lyrically, the type of stuff that you write, like the the depth of your writing, but I have seen it in the past. Yeah. So I know, like, yeah, you you could really write something really deep. Yeah, it, it, it's get you in the feels. I was looking at I was looking at the entire Canto Three record because it's Act One, Act Two, Act Three. So I was trying to like get my arms around what's going on by the time you get to Act Three. Mm -hmm. Um. It, it looks like it's it, it's starting off with a guy who's transitioning from dying to living. I mean, because you, you got the album here, and he's I'm assuming this guy's on the River Styx, right? You know, the boat mentioned yeah. the River Styx. The first one is Between Two World, Ocularis, Infernum. And then Act 2 is... Uh... Interesting is I can't find Act Two. Am I in Act Two right there? So that's weird. It act goes from three. Act One. Yeah. It goes one. Yeah, but three, yeah, four, two and, and five six. is not two there. Two and five yeah. are not there. So I'm assuming this is part of what they're doing, I guess. But 
he who willingly suffers is in the middle and then in the desert vast after that. So it, it looks like the whole subject matter is like how to deal with death, but it's like you're catching the guy um, in a in a moment where, especially at the, the first song, the first song is he's between the two worlds and he's yeah. dealing with his sins and all the rest of it. Um, so that by the time you get to act three, <clears throat> fear, no one else in this dream, sorrow, scarring, no one else. Stay in my dreams, follow me, end your soul. Remorse feeds the pain even though the soul bleeds. So that's the that's the first kind of chunk. And I'm assuming that the person talking to him is the the dude in the river sticks, you know, the, Probably, the, the yeah. boat guy. Yeah. Right? Um, there's nobody else in this dream, which is really fascinating because I think about that a lot. Like I think about when I was a kid, and I first kind of came into the concept of death, it didn't really freak me out. You know, being a Christian, you're just transitioning from one world to another. Um, but I always used to think to myself, like, what's the last thing that they thought of, <clears throat> you know, before you go on the, the other side of that thing? Mm -hmm. And that was always a fascinating thought process to me. Like, what are they thinking about? Which is probably why you, like, you go through these phases where you'll look at, like, people's last words. Yeah, yeah. I do that a lot. I do that a lot when I... The Fairman, yeah. Um, mm. Act 2 is called Where the Descent Begin. That's right. Okay. That's right, because I did see that on the thing with Jiggy. Um, so it looks like he's between life and death. But I thought to myself, like... When you get to that world, wherever you end up, that's where you're staying forever, I think. And so, then this world would kind of almost be like a dream. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. What the, what is the only difference between the dream and reality is time. Yeah. So because I spend the majority, I spend all my conscious time in this field. That's reality. Mm -hmm. Then when I'm in my unconscious time, which I don't even know what unconsciousness is, if you're having a dream, then how could you say you're completely unconscious? If you're interfacing... Yeah. Oh, no, I agree. I if just you're, If you're interfacing with people and talking and, and there's a storyline and you still have an ego in the sense that you still, you're still you, <laughs> but even if you're not you, even if you're Michael Jackson... It doesn't matter. You're still interfacing in that in that dream world. So the only yeah, difference yeah. between this world and that world is time. Yeah, yeah. I fell asleep listening to Jung last night. That's probably why. But I, I don't feel like it's just time. I feel like it's also like degrees of reality. Like just like the when you when you wake up from a dream you're like oh uh, this this world is significantly more real or or at least from perception this world seems to be more this real world? this world that we currently not a dream world uh -huh. when you're in the dream world that seems like the most real and then when you wake up from the dream you're like no this is the most real that one's not as real because obviously again everything can always be questioned deeper and it can kind of flip you around but like you know, if I just had a dream and you were in my dream, well, you, you, you had no conscious, but you, you had no consciousness within my dream to make the decisions of what we were going to do in my dream. Like you acted like yourself in that, my dream. The person that represented me in your dream wasn't actually me. What right. You're calling me now. That's what I'm saying. That's weird. But yeah. yeah but, but there was a person in that dream that represented me. That wasn't me. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, how do we know that the person that wasn't representing me isn't conscious? I know. Like, oh, I agree. Of you. I agree. I totally agree with that. I think that there's a lot of questions there. But I'm saying, like, if you look at the dream world, I'm I'm interfacing with consciousnesses or possibly just versions of my own consciousness that is you within the dream. Yeah, but I don't um, believe that you only have a singular consciousness. I know, but that's not the argument I'm trying to make. And then oh, I'm saying, you, when you wake up, now you're interface, interfacing with what seems like it's more of a real like for instance if i fall and i cut my head open in my dream i'm not my head is not cut open in this reality but in this reality if i fall and i cut my head open my head is still cut open yeah but your but head then, isn't cut open in your dream if you cut your head open in this reality and then you had a dream i don't think that the cut wouldn't follow you no but the pain does 
I think that's something unique to you. Um, I've been in a lot of painful situations, and the few times I can remember my dream, I don't remember like, oh, my ankle's still or my. Yeah, well, the, for me, it always like, for instance, throughout pregnancy, I'm so friggin' thirsty all the time that like I'm dying of thirst in like the real world, and in my dream, I cannot seem to drink enough water. So, like that, that reality is entering the dream because that's the that is the state that my body is in. But then, but then what I was saying was that. I think that when you die and you go into the next reality that because this one, this one would be more the dream state. Like that reality is going to be even more than this. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not certain that, uh, Bye, Andre. because, because whatever reality you're in, in the next world, it's going to be qualitatively different than this world. And then you're going to say that that reality was real. That reality is going to be more real than this reality. Then, so if this reality is some sort of transitional reality between the dream world and whatever the next world is, I'm 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 very curious to how quote real. And you know some of these some of these conversations are what does the term real mean? Mm -hmm. Because that really exposes your presuppositions. If I ask Sam Harris what real means and I ask Don Hoffman what real means, you're going to get two different answers because yeah. Sam Harris is a physicalist. Yeah, and uh, and and Hoffman is it, and so that's part of the issue that I have is uh, what are we calling, what are we calling real in the first place? Yeah, um, uh, because that would that would end up being what you think ultimate reality is. It's funny because like years ago, <laughs> when I was part of that cult, somebody from that cult was basically th they were th well they were throwing around some ideas that probably. They probably would have gotten in trouble for if, if they, they met the, the leadership. But anyway, um, they were saying like that if you compare this reality to the next, and I've said this to you before, and actually I think that it was kind of depicted in one of the books that you were listening to. Um, they were saying like if you if you could jump on a bus and drive yourself to the, to the reality that you'll be a part of after you die and you were to step out with this body, even the grass itself from that reality would be so much more real than your body could handle that it would slice your feet yeah basically c.s lewis in the great divorce that was I knew it yeah it was something was, there that, that was, was similar kind of yeah the, the, the idea and maybe the person was reading that illegally you couldn't read material that's outside why, of the approved list that's that's why you know when you when you listen to ancient people talk about the other world and then you listen to modern scientists talk about multi-dimensional realities and you know as Stephen Myers pointed out that um, the minute you say that there is a multiversal theory you are a supernaturalist because naturalism is about what's in the universe so if you say oh, that there's oh, oh, a universe oh. outside of the universe that is by definition supernatural okay. so you have all these brilliant people who, who believe that a multiverse is an explanation for the <laughs> basic mysteries that we have when in reality, it's like, okay, thank you. You've just conceded supernaturalism now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my point is, like, yeah, yeah. The, the our perceptions of of what you know, it, and we look at death as like a transition. So, like in the song, he's he he's yeah, fighting, absolutely. and then like he talks about being between worlds and things like that, and. Because we're in a physical context in this particular slice of space time, we look at, we use terms that physical people like transitioning, going, you know, using locational yeah, terms. Yeah. <clears throat> and instead of thinking to ourselves, what if all of reality, what if all of reality is all that is, and what we're calling reality are just the limitations that have been placed on us for us to function. So, mm -hmm. what if death is not necessarily your consciousness going somewhere? Yeah. Versus a certain scale is removed from your eye, and now you see, you know, let's say reality is in all these like concentric kind of circles, and so at death you you're you're able to look at a wider circle. So you're mm -hmm. not going anywhere. Yeah. You're just experiencing more reality mm -hmm. for, for what it is. And obviously, as a Christian, yeah. we would say that 
we get more and more real for all eternity because you're getting closer to ultimate reality, which is God. And because God is infinite, then reality itself is is would be ever expanding from our phenomenological right, vantage point. Right, right, right. So if you look at it from that vantage point, it's like, well, holy shit, like that changes a lot of yeah. things, it, you know, like in this song and things of that nature, like. It's a very interesting thing to... No, to, why, to, go ahead. why do you think that, that... Why does that change things? Whether or not you believe that you're going somewhere or because that, that you just... that means we're already there. We just don't know it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so... Well, I mean, we kind of subscribe to that already, like in ways as Christians, for instance. Like, there's a lot of people that don't believe that there's anything like a materialist doesn't believe in anything beyond what you can see and what you can feel. We, you know, we, there's Bible, there's Bible verses that say, um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness that, you know, wage against us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Stuff like that. So there's that idea in Christianity that there is something right here where you are. You just don't see it. Yes. What I'm specific. Yes. The, the, the quotes, the, what we call the spiritual world yeah. or what scientists say other dimensions, yeah. which, which is one of the running hypotheses for the UFO phenomena. It's right. not that they're from another planet, but that they're from another dimension. Yeah. Hence explaining these 90 degree. You know. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree to a degree, but, but most Christians say when you die, <laughs> when you, most Christians Negative say when you, vibes. oh my gosh. <laughs> When you die, you go to heaven or go to hell. Yeah. Those are locational, yeah, yeah. physical physical statements. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What I'm saying is that, no, you don't go anywhere. You just reveal reality that you're already existing in, that, that God has shielded from you because, you know, your purpose of this little slice of time is to explain, for you to have an understanding of why you ended up where you ended up when reality actually comes you know, mm-hmm. to bear. <laughs> so it, it's more yeah. of, it, it's yeah. more, yeah, it's more of like, you know, if you look at this guy, if you look at what he said, you know, cause, cause, uh, Perk was talking about that. So he says, how hard a thing is it to say, what was this for? Savage, rough and stern, which in every thought renews the fear. So bitter it is. And death is a little more, but of the good to treat, which there I found, Speak will I of the other things I saw. I cannot well repeat how there I entered. Hmm. So he, he doesn't know necessarily how he got here. Yeah. And he's in this forest, savaged and stern. But when you go down more, especially in the title of the other song, the forest ends up as a desert at the end of it. He's walking down these these desert tr- trails or whatever. Yeah, on the desert slope. <clears throat> yeah, the way I resumed, I on this desert slope. So that the firm foot ever was the lower and lower and above, lower above the rage above of the death. rage of death so he starts off in a forest and the forest isn't idyllic necessarily because it's stern but at least it's a forest but he ends in in death um mm-hmm. which is a it's it's he ends up in a desert which symbolizes death which very much mirrors the christian understanding we start in the garden And then by the time Jesus shows up, he ends up in a desert or a wilderness, however you want to translate that Greek word. Mm -hmm. And so you go from this place that has ordered beauty, life, to a desert, which is hot and, you know, treacherous and freezing at night. And it's it's just very, very... Lonely. um, Yeah, very a lonely lonely type feeling for sure. But it's also like the effects of what we would say is Christian sin on the world. Like, you see the evidence of the curse. Yeah. You went from a forest to a desert, a garden to a wilderness <coughs> yeah, type the, of situation. The animals were kind in the garden to now you have wild beasts. Yeah. So, you know, thinking about death is, is sort of like the removal of a veil. And, you know, we talk about this in the spiritual sense when a person, you know, is saved. They get the scales removed from their eyes. You know, Paul, Pauline language. You weren't going anywhere. You were just aware of a new reality, and so when a person when a person dies, they're transitioning to that to that new reality, and obviously they get to see the other the other realistic side about death is that you finally get to see, especially from a Christian worldview, how your actions, words, thoughts truly affected people. Because right now, 
we're not seeing anything as it really is at all nothing i i don't believe we're seeing anything as it actually is so at death there's that yeah. mechanism where now you're 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 open to i believe seeing things as it really were how reality, what you yeah. said really affected yeah. a person because right now yeah. all we can do is is all we have is metaphor and a familiarity so mm. like if 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 johan is if johan's eyes are watery or whatever that's that's that that has a metaphorical import water in the eyes doesn't mean anything emotionally mm-hmm. <laughs> there are biological explanation explanations for why you have water in your eye but there's there is a there's a context there's a socio psychological context where tears you, you you get what the terror means by what's happening in the context so Steph Curry's crying why is he crying mm-hmm. well he's happy and we're, we're assuming he's crying tears of joy because of the context he mm-hmm. just won this other person's at a funeral he's crying so we're interpreting that 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 water as this is sadness. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but you don't... Yeah, like you said, you don't really know. Like, you Michael Jordan, know. after his father passed away, right. his father was a major, major support for him. Right. And I'm sure that after that, some of the wins that he had, he cried not just because he's winning, it wasn't a happy moment, but he missed his dad. Oh, there was that moment after he won a championship against Seattle that he was just on the ground and sobbing like, yeah. a, like, like a baby. Yeah. And, so, and again, we can I, assume, I, think, I know why he's crying. But, but we don't know for sure, yeah. But there's like 15 different reasons why, why mm-hmm. you're laughing or crying. I think, too, that we'll <coughs> see the not just like how your words or your actions affected who was around you, but also generationally. So you know how people will be like, like you'll be talking to somebody and they have this major problem with something and stuff isn't going right. And then the more you talk to them and the more you dig, you realize that something happened to them when they were a kid. Right. So that's what I mean. They're, you know, now they grew up and they're an adult and you don't realize that the reason that they just, I was just reading somebody's post today and they were saying that their kid when they were in kindergarten was like a real jerk to, um, actually it might've been in our comment section. Yeah. It was in our comment section. They were saying that like their kid was in kindergarten and the kindergarten teacher was like a real jerk to their kid. And, um, the person had some major issues, but he, he was the dad. And so because he loved his kid, he got involved to basically get the teacher off the kid's back. And, um, you kind of got from the situation that the teacher had definitely had issues outside of the classroom and that it was making its way into the classroom. And so, you know, you have these issues and these ways that people are treated from childhood or whatever that affects them into their later years. And then they end up hurting people as a result of what's happened to them. And so, um, it, it really does make a long term, um, mess, I guess you could say that we won't see. Yeah. You know, or like you cut somebody off in traffic, or you know, yeah, you can you can whatever. have you can have empathy here and now. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, even when you're empathizing with someone, there's so much that you miss in this life. So, for example, we'll go back to Steph Curry. Steph Curry won a title, and so he's crying, and we go, he's crying tears of joy. Mm-hmm. So obviously you don't empathize the way you empathize with a person who's crying tears of joy you is to celebrate. celebrate with them. Yeah. But wait a second. This year, his parents almost all, all, all got divorced mm-hmm. in a pretty public way. Yeah. There's stuff going on between him and his wife. Yeah. So what I'm saying is there's levels of, 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 of meaning as yeah. to what we all mean to each other yeah. that get lost in translation. And so when you get to the next world, one of the things I think is going to happen is that those divisions somehow are going to be more clear. And so then I will know what was, you know, Paul says, I'll know as I'm fully known. Right. I think that's part of it. That's why, that's where I'm basing that assumption. Okay. Is that, you know, now we've seen a glass darkly, Paul Yeah. Said. <clears throat> and he's talking about obviously knowing Christ, but he's saying, I will know as I am fully known. So that's the spectrum yeah. from Paul to Christ and everything in between. And so what I'm saying is that this guy is talking about, you know, dealing with going from a, a, a forest, essentially, to a desert, dealing with the transition from living to dying. If you look at the other lyrics in the, in, in the because I was looking at the other lyrics, he seems concerned with his sins. If you, if you go up mm. here, he talks about regret increasing the mm. pain. Mm. Um, so 
that's another thing because you're you're coming to the end of see people think oh i'm coming to the end of my life so they're filled with all these regrets yeah yeah oh because i can't undo the thing that i did yeah. in this life because they think this life is over if you look at this life as a continuum yeah. Then you look at it as something that you needed to learn from and sure, make amends if possible, but I needed to learn that for this next thing. But if you think this life is it, then you're gonna be com- you're gonna be completely buried with regrets and 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 every bad thing that you did and mm-hmm. all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's also seems to be some of this guy's angst if I look at the lyrics on the other side of yeah. it is how he reconciles his conscience. Hmm. With the reality that he's going to leave uh, this version of reality and he doesn't know who's running the other one. Right. And so he yeah. doesn't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And I think that's one of the blessed, call it what you want, delusions of Christianity is that I have this firm, I'm going to my father and mm-hmm. I'm going to experience reality and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> Uh, but if you don't have that to, to, to as your ballast, I yeah. mean, forget it. Yeah. Good night. I mean, yeah. it's just a brilliant, brilliant song. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant song. Yeah, this is a 10 for me. I really, uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, uh... And that, that... The, the, the songs this time, part. like, no disrespect anybody but were just massively thought provoking like they were dealing the first with one mm. it, yeah, yeah. there but they were the, the last couple of songs were dealing with some pretty existential mm-hmm. um issues mm-hmm. um that i think that i think the term you know anyway 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 i love the so song nine, nine dot four Nine dot four. I like there the other one. It. I like the other one a, a, a lot better, but I this one too. I respected as well. I did like <laughs> the other one a lot better, um, but I, yeah, I'm I'm still gonna I'm gonna stick with my scores, but I I did like the other one a lot better. I actually when I said the score of ten, I was like, Ugh, I didn't put a big enough gap because I liked the other one so much. But I really really did like the instrumental part, like what was going on behind all yes. this. It was absolutely beautiful, yes. and I'd like to get the instrumental part and you know do my own thing with that i thought that was really cool so very yeah. inspirational yeah i i um yeah dad this was a such a that that rising action part from the spoken word to me is like of course but nobody's i we've listened to thousands of songs it's the first time i've ever heard that yeah. <laughs> and it's definitely something i'm gonna steal for sure <laughs> Uh, all right, all right. Steal inspiration from, he means. Uh, I steal. All 